So there's two more uh, sections here that I'd like to uh, cover in this uh, tutorial. So we covered the, uh, the basic settings in the, the previous uh, video. Now I'd like to quickly cover the uh, lens correction and the uh, effects. So in lens correction, we have two main things. So I wouldn't write too much about what they're doing at this point. If you're interested in learning uh, about what these are, uh, chromatic aberrations has to do with uh, the contrast between really bright points and darker points. It can uh, help improve uh, some aspects of your photo, the specific photo. It's probably not gonna do a whole lot, but it can be helpful in certain scenarios. And then also enabling profile corrections. Also, again, probably not super useful in this photo, but like if you have uh, uh, too strong a vignetting that in your photo, right, then you can easily select the enable profile corrections to fix that and any other distortions, uh, like any kind of geometry or other problems that might be caused by the lens. They can frequently be just corrected by checking this box and it uses the metadata from your uh, images that hopefully is telling uh, Lightroom what lens you were using in order to make uh, these uh, sort of corrections. So yeah, so basically just check these boxes for the most part. You don't have to think too much about them and uh, worry about what they're doing behind the scenes. They'll mostly just work for most of the uh, basic use cases. The one other section that I'd like to cover quickly is the effects here. So there's one piece of this that I think is relevant. So one way to uh, create a highlight, so to speak, or differentiate your photos and uh, make them uh, just overall more appealing is to uh, use uh, the lighting of the photo to uh, draw attention to specific parts. So one simple way to do this with is with vignetting. So if I bring up the vignetting, I can have a white vignetting, which can uh, frame my photo. In most cases, the extreme versions of this are not good. So in this photo, right, I'm not sure if I like a, a white vignetting, right, because it does not seem to be adding to this photo. There are some cases where you might have a really dark contrast in the middle where the white can actually frame the photo and it can work. I've done that before, but most of the time uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, like increasing uh, the, the brightness of the vignetting so that you... Uh, uh, have a white border. So more frequently, a darker uh, vignette is actually helpful to the photo. So if you look at this specific photo, the main highlight of the, or the main attraction in this photo would probably be uh, either the sky or the mountain here, right? And so where the mountain and the sky come together in the middle, you'd say probably is where most people's eyes would go in the, the scene, right? I mean, there's a lot of leading lines going there, whether it's in the foreground here, here, the horizon, the clouds kind of point there. There's many different uh, paths, right, to get back to uh, the middle of this photo. And so increasing the vignette, right, will uh, remove the, the brightness from the corners of the photo. And if we want to see what that looks like in the extreme, right? Like, obviously that's not, not a good edit, but like it, just for contrast, you can see that your eyes are immediately drawn to the middle of the photo, right? Is where you want them to be. But you actually want a more subtle effect than that. So the viewer is not actually thinking about the fact that the corners are dark or because that could be distracting. If you just give a slight vignette like this, you get the same, same, same visual effect without the distraction. So basically, this is another way to uh, enhance your photo.